It'll be one to go this time, bye. Coming to the green, buddy, coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, 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 take, 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 go, 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 go. Get some motor running. Head out on the highway. And my last question would also be, I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts on the Michigan track. Uh, it seems to be a fan favorite, a driver favorite. Uh, just talk about what it's like to go and race there. Well, I, I personally like Michigan a lot. It's um, what I like about it is it gets so wide throughout the day that you know you got one guy that um, how you say it, Tony Stewart. He's always been a bottom feeder at Michigan. He'll make his car work at the bottom, and you got um, Michael Waltrip that makes his car go pretty fast right up next to the wall. So there's a lot of racing room there. You can run four wide in the middle of the corner, and uh, I think that's why us drivers like it, and probably why the fans like it as well. Great man, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll now hear from Godwin Kelly with Daytona Beach News Journal. Hey, Robbie. Um, Tony Stewart's going to be a driver owner next year. Is there any, uh, any words of wisdom you can give him going into that? You know, I, I think he'll do a good job at it. You know, the only, the only words of wisdom um, that I gave him was, it's in a, and I only mean it in fun and games, be careful what you wish for, you might get it. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a chore. Um, to be the driver and the owner, but at the same time, provided you, you hire the right people and they do their job and follow through with it and take ownership in it, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it's, it's, when, it's when you have to get involved in, in certain situations. All right, thank you. Thanks. And we'll now hear from Damian Dottori with Orange County Register. You know, when you don't maybe necessarily have a good read on what your budget and stuff is going to be like for the following year, how hard is it for you to maybe build and expand upon your team to make it better from what it is now? Well, you know, um, one, one thing about, um, you know, budgets for next year, and, and trust me, we know exactly what it costs from year to year. You know, the, the fuel cost is, is changing our travel just a little bit, but it's, um, in the big scheme of things, it's not affecting us a lot. Um, Shipping hasn't seemed to affect us very much because a lot of our parts come out of Charlotte here where we're based. Uh, but as far as, um, you know, our, our budget, um, you know, this year has been our first year of, of car tomorrow. And uh, I'll be, be honest with you, we've run the same five cars for the last three months. So we have inventory built up. We continue to build new inventory, build new cars, uh, which, are, which are only better. And we do that throughout the season. So I don't think, I can't see for any reason why next year would be a lot more money than it was this year to operate one of our cars. I mean, as far as not having like a read on like a sponsor, like a full-time sponsor, anything that doesn't change anything the way you're preparing for next year? Well, we, we know what it takes as, um, as sponsorship to go and do this thing, and I, I feel confident that, um, that we'll get a sponsor for next year and that we'll be able to continue on. I also have a lot of confidence that Jim Beam will return with us as well. Okay, thank you. Thanks. We'll now go to Jason Schoen with NASCAR.com. Hey, Robbie, I was just curious if you can kind of compare and contrast uh, Sonoma to Watkins Glen, kind of how you attack it and, and the strategy you use to try to win there. Thanks. Strategies are still about the same. Um, pit strategy has a lot to do with it. Fuel mileage has a lot to do with it and time and a caution right. Uh, as far as race cars, you know, our cars have been fast at Sonoma. We ran inside the top three uh, for the first half of the race until we until we pushed it on, on fuel mileage and, um, and we cut, hung ourselves out. But... You know, on, on one side of it, um, you know, I think the, the tracks have elevation change pretty similar. Uh, Watkins is a faster race track as far as top speed than what we have at Sonoma. But, um, but both of them, you still got to turn left and you got to turn right, and the car has to, um, has to be very consistent on the tires and not abuse them too hard. Mr. Schoen, anything further? That's all I need. Thank you. As a reminder, that is star one to ask a question. And we'll now hear from David Allen with RaceGear.com. Hi, Robbie. Hi, Red. Hi, David. How are you? I'm uh, pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. I read an interesting stat on you that um, you're in the top five for most green flag passes at Watkins Green. Can you talk about what's key to being able to pass there uh, and make moves? Is it the car, the driver, braking points? Uh, give us some idea. 
Uh, heck, um, I'm going I'm to say, um, I'm going to call it out to bad pit strategy. And that's why we've had to pass the most cars. You know, we, uh, we normally run really good at those races. We qualify well. And we've, um, we've, either, we've either not gotten the fuel mileage to, to have the pit strategy or we've made some bad calls or, or a bad pit stop. But, um, you know, as far as passing, uh, Watkins, Sonoma, um, they're both about the same. Um, you know, our cars uh, seem, to, seem to stop really good, and that helps. Uh, the other side is, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my competitors know that we're, we're good on the road races, so sometimes they give me away. You know, if I start to, sh to show that I'm there, um, they'll just let us have the, have the positions. So, you know, I think there's a, a bunch of things that uh, they equate to what, it, what, what that stat uh, shows. Thanks. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. We'll take our last question today from Dwight Drum with Racetake.com. Thank you. Uh, hi, Robbie. Uh, uh, what's the hardest part of, of being a driver owner, and, and, and what, if anything, did you expect to be difficult that really wasn't? Wow. I think the, um, the hardest part, the first part, was, was getting the operation up and running. Um, now that we're, we're, in our, we're in our fourth year as, as team owners now, so um, that's, um, that's pretty surprising when you look back at it. But we've showed really good consistency every year. We've, um, we've climbed the ladder in points, and, and we, we work ourselves up into a higher position. I'm confident by the end of the year this year we'll learn from some of the mistakes that we made again with a car tomorrow. Um, you know, this is our first, first year of running a car tomorrow year-round. And when you're a single car, a team, it takes a little longer to, to find solutions for some of the problems. But, um, you know, the, the people side of it is, is probably the most difficult, getting everybody on the same team. Um, it sounds crazy. You'd think everybody working together would be on the same team anyways. But, um, you know, you have a lot of cliques and a lot of groups, and um, there's a lot of egos in the sport. So uh, trying to get everybody to, to work together and, and be a team to, to make the best product that we can possibly make and bring it to the racetrack every week is, has probably been the hardest thing. And, and the schedule, you know, um, we look at the, the NASCAR schedule and people say it's 36 weekends. And, you know, we do the Dakar Rally and it's a 16-day race. But the NASCAR schedule is like the Dakar Rally all year long. You know, um, by the time you get home on Monday, you've got to be already having cars ready so that uh, they can roll in the truck on Wednesday and go the next weekend. So you have to, you have to be really well prepared. You've got to really look into the future of, of what you're going to need to make your team better. And it's, it's hard to work on your stuff and go to the racetrack and make improvements. So, um, you know, if it, was a, if it was a goal post that stood still, uh, it'd be pretty easy to kick field goals, but every week the competition gets a little bit better. The field goal moves a little farther down, and you got to push your guys and you got to push your team to be better and stronger. And, and what, if anything, did you expect that would be difficult that really wasn't? What, what was easy for you? Let's put it that way. Um, I think the, the the easy part of it's always been the driving part of it, um, making our race cars fast, making our race cars light, and 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 making our race team efficient has probably been the most um, difficult thing, but. You know, we're, like I said, we're four years into it now, so if, if an, an opportunity opened up for a second car, we do have a lot of our policies and procedures in place um, and our systems where, where we're kind of routine now. And, um, and we're not racing the race of, of Wednesday or Thursday to get the car in the hauler. We're actually racing the race on the racetrack, and that's the most important thing. Great. Thanks a lot, and good luck this week. Thank you. That's all the questions we have for today. Herb, I'll turn it back to you. All right, thank you. Robbie Gordon, thank you very much for joining us today. Best of luck this weekend, in addition to racing Sunday in the Centurion Boats at the Glen NASCAR Sprint Cup race, also racing Saturday in the NASCAR Nationwide Series event, the Zippo 200. So best of luck this weekend. It's a big one for you. All right, thank you very much. It's good talking to you guys. Very good, and thanks to all the media who participated today. As always, we appreciate the coverage. Ladies and gentlemen, this video teleconference will be available available for rebroadcast after 4 p.m. today. You may access the rebroadcast at any time by dialing 888-203-1112 for domestic and 719-457-0820 for international and entering the access code 4677-423. The transcript and audio files of the video teleconference will be available this afternoon and can be accessed at www.nascarmedia.com. That does conclude our NASCAR CAM event for today. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect.